what's going on guys it's your boy tuba back again with another player review this time around we are reviewing mr marcus alonso he's 84 europa league card and before i get into anything let me just say this review is going to be split up into two different sections one of which is going to be a solid review on the card itself and how it currently performs um, considering his rating, his cost, so on and so forth. And the other one is going to be broken down to how the card works, the, the fact that it's an SBC card, what that means, what the packs you get, so on and et cetera, et cetera. So let's get straight into it. So before I start, let me just say, as of right now, this SBC currently co will cost you 140k to do. Um, me personally, it cost 115, I think it was. I did have a few players. And I did do it a little bit earlier, so it is currently rising. I don't think it's going to rise anymore. If anything, it will probably go a little bit lower in price. So give it a few days if you want to save a bit of money. So let's get into the review. How did I find his card? Now, looking at his stats in particular, he does have 75 pace. And that is probably the biggest stat that will stand out to you guys. As for a fullback, you don't necessarily want him to have 75 pace. Um, he also has 80 dribbling, 76 shot, 82 defense, 81 physical and 81 passing. Now for me, one thing that really did make a difference and I did state this before and it was proven when I did play with him was the fact that he is six foot two and he has high, high work rates. Now, one of them is a negative reason for me personally and the other one is a positive. Now, the positive is the fact that he's six foot two. Me personally, I love tall fullbacks just because i concede a ton of corners guys i ended up having to sell my entire defense and doing real ferdinand's spc because i was sick and tired of just conceding from corner headers and whatever so on and so forth and what i noticed was me personally every time i played and i conceded a corner i was put in a position where i was my fullback at that point, it was Jordi Alba, who is like five foot one, wherever he is in game. And for those of you that understand what I mean is when you, a ball goes into the box, you don't really have that much time to quickly change, especially when they take a very quick corner. You end up being Jordi Alba and you end up conceding because he's not tall enough. So when I had and I played with Marcus Alonso from a corner, I normally was preset to him, which meant that even when... My opponent put the ball into the box really quickly. I was tall enough to just deal with it and get away, um, just head it out and clear it. And that, for me, was a very big thing. I conceded a ton of less corners with, with him. Um, with the 15 games I did play, I literally did not concede one corner. And that that alone, guys, <laughs> makes me happy as hell. You don't understand. That honestly means a big deal to me. So, what didn't I like about it is the fact that he has high, high work rates. Me, personally... I don't feel that high, high work rates work with him in the sense of him having 75 pace. What I did notice was, and I don't mean by any means he was in attack, but he was pretty much in the midfield pushing up when, and I do have stay back while at attacking on him, but he would still push up from to from defense to the midfield. And that was annoying, especially because he has 75 pace. And whenever my oppon opponent saw that, Saw that little gap, passed it to their winger. He was way out of position. He couldn't get back in time. And it either meant that I had to like deal with a very sticky situation or I just conceded a goal just because he was way out of position. And it was uh, annoying. I'm not going to lie, guys. It was very annoying. However, that was probably the biggest negative I could say about him. And that is pretty much to do with his pace. If he had a lot higher pace, let's say he had an 87 pace card or it was a little bit higher than that i don't think pace would have been an issue i would have had a bit more confidence in him going back into position especially when he pushes up like for me Jordi alba i think has high medium work rates i think i might not be correct on that one but with him because he has such high pace when he is out of position i trust in him getting back but again it's a bit of it's it's a bit of a scale in the sense of Jordi alba short marcus alonso's tall um, Jordi Alba's got pace, Marcus Alonso currently doesn't. So you are playing a bit of a weighing scale there. So what other stats did I notice the, the most? Now, one thing I didn't notice was his shot. Um, and the reason why is I don't like shooting with my fullbacks. I don't really have him in that position where he's in that uh, position to shoot. However, whenever the ball did fall to him and let's say he was in that position, do you know what, guys? His shot's not even too bad. If I'm completely honest, I think I ended up having... 
six shots with him and all six was on target. I think he scored one or two goals. I may need to check that, but I'm pretty sure he did score one goal, which I was a bit like, oh, how did that one go in? So at the very least, what I can say is his shot is very trusting and it's a, it's a little add-on to have, let's say. Like his card's good, but just knowing that he can shoot when you are in that position and you do, it does fall to him. Ideally, pass it to someone, but if it does fall to him, there's no one else there. Go for it. You might actually get a cheeky goal out of it. At the very least, it's going to be on target. So, again, that's a big plus, if anything, to his card. Now, another thing, and one thing I adored about him, is the fact that he has got phenomenal passing. Now, even though in-game he has 81 passing, I felt, personally, the card, because of... Maybe it's to do with his balance and his overall physicality, but his card was very good at passing. Whenever he was pressured... When he had the ball, he was easily able to shrug off the opponent. And whenever the opponent charged at him and he was in a good range to actually get the ball, he was easily able to just push him off the ball and basically defend as a great fullback. And I love that about him, guys. His physicality does help him a lot. And there's a lot of players that have high physicality, but because they're not that tall, they're not that great. And the physicality, you don't really see that much. However, the fact that he's six foot two and I can't stress this enough, really does help in that defensive role. That being said, if you're playing someone that's got a bit of space and they abuse that f the fact that he's not got a pace, it's a bit of a big worry when it comes to Marcus Alonso. And that is probably the biggest negative going back to the pace aspect that he has. Now, the fact that he's got 80 dribbling, 82 defending and 81 physical for me makes a humongous difference um, in the sense of defense just because... As a defender, when he is in that position to defend or opponents near him, um, hasn't got that much space. He does close down very well and he will basically win the ball off them. Like nine times out of ten for me, honestly, he won the ball. Now, overall, guys, me personally, I would honestly, at this very moment, based on the card itself, at 84 rated left back, I would give him a solid seven out of ten. Now, that being said, I would basically say that if you've played with 84 you're getting basically that but a little bit better in all stats and one thing that has improved for me from in comparison to his 82 card is the fact that his defending has become a lot better and his physicality in particular is phenomenal like he generally will push push he's more than likely to push someone off the ball when they've got it he doesn't really wait and let them go past them like as some defenders do he will get straight into that and push them off the ball which is great but negatives are the fact that he's not got the pace. So if they've got a little bit of space, uh, it's going to be a big problem for you. So what other recommendations do I have? I do personally still think Jordi Alba is a better card. I do generally think that Marcelo is a better card as well as Alexandro. However, as an alternative and one of the only few left backs you can use in the Premier League, um, the other ones being Mendy or maybe Robertson, in my opinion, probably the best. Um, I do think he's near enough on Mendy's level, but again, doesn't have the pace, but has de better defending. So it's up to you whether or not you think that's worth it. Which brings me on to my next point, and the next part of this review, guys, is the fact that he's a SBC card, and the fact that he's a Europa League card. Now, what that means, one of two things. At this moment, you will get... 100k pack for around 70k guys the 100k pack SBC will cost you 70k and the other one will cost you i think it's around 50 or 60k but in total like i said guys this SBC costs 140k and you do get 135k worth of packs now lo and behold i am definitely not telling you guys it's only going to cost you 8k you're going to make your money back no hell no we know how fifa's luck is we know how the pack weight is terrible but that being said it is 100k pack that you can get for 70k and the packs that you do get in return they're pretty much worth it like you do like i said get 135k worth of packs and if you're like me a person that loves opening packs i do recommend just go for it it's an spc that you can do that gives you packs at the very least i know for a fact there's a lot of guys that will um, be out there that will pretty much do an spc without the card that you, you let's say you don't get marcus alonso but let's say if you got a 100k pack for 70k, I know a lot of people that would do that, regardless. So, 
And I probably am one of them, to be fair. So, yeah, guys, that is one thing to take into consideration. It's 135k worth of packs, and the SBC essentially cost you 140k. Moving on, he is a Europa League card. What does that mean? That means he will be getting upgrades every time Chelsea, and when I say Chelsea, I do not mean him. So, essentially, he could get injured from now for the rest of the season, and... Every time Chelsea go further into the stage of the Europa League, he will still get upgraded. So that is something that you will need to take into consideration because he can and potentially may end up with a 91 rated left back card because how it will work is every time they do get further into the competition, so from here they can go into the, was it knockout round? And then he will have an 86 card. 100% they're getting into the knockout round. Now, depending on who they face there, if it's Arsenal, well, it's sad times for them because Arsenal are winning, hopefully. Hint, wink, wink. Um, but depending on who they face, more than likely, they're probably going to face someone that's not that good. Um, and I'm pretty sure Europa League has one extra stage in comparison to the Champions League. So, and realistically, guys, they are a big team. They're not a small team. They are a big team that are probably more than likely to win the Europa League. Them, Arsenal, depending on who gets dropped down as well from the Champions League, that's going to be taken into consideration. Them, Arsenal, Sevilla, um, and I don't know if I'm missing anyone else, but there's probably a few others. But they are one of the few big teams that are more than likely to win the Champions, uh, Europa League this year. So that being said, they will more than likely go um, deeper into the competition than, let's say, another team. Let's say Christian Tafel, a big example, guys. Um, by Leverkusen, depending on who they face, they're not really the biggest team to go that far into, Euro into the Europa League. Of course, anything can happen, and I do admit that. But let's say, for example, Bayern Leverkusen face Chelsea. Who's your money on, guys? Me, personally, it would be Chelsea. Just because, and no, no disrespect to any Bayern Leverkusen fans out there, but, you know, Chelsea's slightly bigger than you guys and slightly a little bit better. They got Hazard, you know what I mean, guys? And you guys got Christian Tarr. Um, and honestly, I don't know who you guys have got. So, yeah, I would say Chelsea will go a little bit further. So you will need to take that into consideration. Essentially, even though he is 84 rated right now, he will more than likely go up to, let's say, 88, 89 rated left back. And for me, for 140k, getting 100k pack, 100, um, sorry, 100k pack, a mega pack, and a potential 88, 89 rated card, I think it's a no-brainer. For me, personally, I think it's definitely worth trying the SPC. And what I would say is, if you hate, if you generally hate, big keyword there, hate, Marcus Alonso's normal card, and you're, you're a little bit tight on coins, do not even bother. And that's my honest opinion. I don't think he's significantly better than his normal card to justify a 140k price tag, especially if you've not got the money. If it's something where you're a little bit tight on money and you don't like his normal card, do not even bother. But if you've got the money, let's say you got 500k in your account, you know, you've got nothing else better to do, go for the SPC. His card at the very least, if you don't like it, stick it in your club, watch it go higher and enjoy the fact that he, you might have an 89, 80, maybe 91 uh, rated left back. Other than that, guys, that's my review. Like I said, um, if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel, and I do appreciate every thumb, thumb up. Thumb up, I get? I don't know how to explain it. But, yeah, I do appreciate um, you guys hitting that button. Give it a cheeky thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. Make sure you do that, you cheeky guy. Subscribe. You've survived this long. You may as well just subscribe. And put your notifications on just so you don't miss another video and or live stream. Because your boy does do a few live streams. And if you don't want to miss that, we do open packs. I do officially get my account back tomorrow. For those of you that don't know, your boy got banned for a couple of seven days. Uh, FIFA Rage was not the one that week. And I do get my account back. So we will be live streaming a little bit more um, when that account returns back to me. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already liked the video subscribe let me know in the comment section guys what do you think of this card do you personally think you're going to be doing it if you're not let me know why and if you definitely are let me know who you end up getting in the 100k pack other than that guys tuba out peace